Hey guys, I'm Max from Watch Crunch, and today we have Evan from the channel You're Terrific. And welcome to the inaugural podcast for Anachronist, where we sit down, have a fireside chat, a little bit more casual of a format where we get horses right from the watch's mouth. Wait, I mean, it's we learn about the horses. It's like an equestrian themed podcast. Anyway, um, so Evan, how are you doing? <laughs> Really, it's great to be here. I'm a fan. As someone who makes videos, it's I know how hard it is, and what you do is really impressive. Thank you. You're quite the international man of mystery. We don't know much about Evan the person. Yeah, I work in software. I'll okay. say that. I make mm -hmm. software. Um, I've always been someone who made things, which is why I make videos. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a compulsion I have. So, you know, I stumbled upon your channel a few years back and I, I was, you know, in the middle of doing something else, just having it on the background. And then suddenly I had this realization, uh, I clicked on a watch video, but now I'm having an existential crisis. Mm. I tell people you're like the Hemingway of horology. Uh, so tell us, you know, where does the inspiration for this writing come from? How do you keep that energy going? I'm not much of a writer. I don't drink and I respect women. I've always been a very philosophical person. Yeah. Uh, we were talking off mic about how for most of my 20s, I studied Buddhism and yoga philosophy. I, I love watches um, and whatever I'm interested in, I will find a way of mm, using it as a mirror right. for my own mind. And then maybe holding it up in front of other people and right. saying, they look at you too. <laughs> so you brought us some of your watches. So I brought three watches. I brought two very large divers. This is a Panerai Pam 111. I brought this because one, I love it. Uh, every time I see myself like in the mirror, just passing by. How much clothes are you wearing? Uh, well, mm, mm. minimal. Um, so anyway, um, I like how this looks on my wrist, but also I brought this because I wanted to compare it to yours. Yes. So you, that I you blame you. Recently. You should. I bought a Luminor after watching your video repeatedly until I convinced myself <laughs> that I can wear this watch. You can. It looks awesome. And this is the thing, like from your perspective, from even a foot away, it, it might even look too big for you. But from here, that's fucking hot. What is the reference number on yours? This is the PAM 111. This has a display back. This was from early 2000s, I think. As far as loom color is concerned, mm. there may be a difference of opinion. How do you feel about faux patina? Uh, not crazy about it, but it looks good on some applications. That looks good. The the loom, when it's firing, looks awesome on that. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. I like a display back on this. You said you don't on yours. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, we're all just trying to justify our purchase decisions, right? Dude, I know. Believe me. <laughs> um, I really love this watch. So when you're standing in front of the mirror, mostly naked, wearing that watch, mm -hmm. how, does, how does it make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel like, uh, like a real man. Okay. No. It, <laughs> I just think it's so original looking. Yeah. Um, True. And I don't want to like Panerai. In, this, in a similar way, I don't, don't want to like any luxury watches. They are weird. They made some strange decisions. It's it's like that uncle that's usually pretty drunk and, and, and belligerent, but then once in a while he brings you a nice toy. How about this next one? Ah, this is a very special one to me. This is a Tag Heuer professional from, I think about 1991, two-tone mustard dial. Um, this is kind of the watch that started it all for me, regrettably. Uh, this was my dad's. And he said, do you want this? And I said, Meh, maybe. And I wasn't even wearing watches at the time. And every day that goes by, I like this thing more. For sentimental reasons, and I just think yellow dial, two-tone, like small quartz. It's so ugly, it's beautiful. So is it, is it nostalgia that makes you A little wear bit. that watch? Uh, I mean, it's yes. I would probably not have bought this for myself. So having it passed to me from my dad, that makes a big difference. But I really, I genuinely just like how it looks. It's just weird. Yeah. It's weird. And I like weird. And speaking of weird. Something fell out of a submarine here. Yeah. Yes, this is the um, the hull, the piece of a hull from a submarine. This Omega Ploprof is the last generation, apparently, because they stopped making Ploprofs. It's titanium. No date. Display back. How about that? 
<laughs> Nothing makes sense anymore. No, 1200 meter water resistance, and I adore this thing. And you try to convince me that, that you can wear that to the office. Uh, the big reason is the 48 millimeter kind of lug to lug, which mm -hmm. there's barely lugs. So 48 millimeters is a Rolex Submariner. That's about the same. And it has a very interesting sort of uh, mechanism for deploying the bezel. Yeah, it's terrible. It's real, real impractical. Because <laughs> you actually have to hold down this orange button and rotate. It's a bi-directional bezel. Okay. It's almost impossible to use. There's a left-hand crown with a crown guard, almost impossible to use. And so you obviously had a very strong reaction to that watch from the get-go. Since then, has it grown? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes really. Yes. As I said in a bunch of my videos, like the more watches I go hands-on with, the more I appreciate strange watches. Um, because I'm, I guess I get bored, I don't know. Cool, well thanks for sharing your collection. The other thing that I really wanted to ask you about, um, you, you're one of these creators that speaks directly to your audience. There's a quote from a recent video of yours where you said you're somebody who has the uh, Swiss lever escapement tattooed on your low back, <laughs> adjusted to five positions. And I had to go check in the mirror and make sure you know I didn't accidentally get that in my sleep. <laughs> uh, so what is your relationship with your audience and, and how has that those interactions um, sort of molded your experience with watches? When I was interested in a watch, either buying it or just researching it, I would go to YouTube and I would try to get my questions answered and only half the time my questions would be answered. Because like, you didn't even mention the, the thickness of the thing. Like, that's, this is not helpful. And the weight, you're, you're very particular the about the weight. The weight is important. So I just try to put myself in someone's shoes who's watching a video and what would they want to know about this thing? And what would they want to hear? And then you also have to deal with my sense of humor as well, because that's just the price you pay. <laughs> so, um, and as far as my relationship with my audience, like, I wish I had more of one. I wish I had more time to dedicate to like answering questions or even going around the country and having meetups like a uh, random Rob does mm -hmm. I, apparently like I met him last year and he said he did that and I was just amazed going on tour yeah like he Andrew Morgan who will be here next week awesome <laughs> wow uh, I would love to do that but between work and kids it's not possible but I don't know I, I hope people hear that that like I I want to spend more time with the audience. I wish I could. I just want to thank you for coming today. I want to present you with the Watch Crunch NATO strap <laughs> in our signature colors. Oh man. It's 20 millimeter, so it probably won't fit any of your manly watches. But no, but it'll fit that tag and it'll look <laughs> terrible on that thing. <laughs> Check out Evan's channel, You're Terrific. If you haven't already, it'll make you think profound thoughts. Thank you, awesome. Check out the new Watch Crunch app, which just dropped. Um, if you want to have discussions that are maybe a little more in depth than the Emoji Fest on IG, do all those YouTube things. You know, like, subscribe, let us know in the comments what else you want us to ask our guests, what games you want to play. And uh, we'll see you next time.